Okay, here we're going to take a look at um, other comprehensive income from our investments PowerPoint. And so, let's see. Well, not sure. We will simply go through it quickly. Okay, comprehensive income is what this video is about. This is where we take up the last few slides from the PowerPoint show. The companies must all show the revenues, expenses, gains, and losses recognized during the period on the income statement, including any unrealized gains and losses from the trading securities. Okay, even though those have not yet been sold. So all of that is shown on the income statement as actual um, pluses and minuses. Revenues and gains are pluses and expenses and losses are minuses. Okay, um, and then of course all of those things get closed into income summary and then closed from income summary into retained earnings. Now, unrealized gains and losses from available for sale securities are not shown on the income statement because they're not being sold in the next few days. But GAAP says the fair value of these investments needs to be on the balance sheet. So here's where you're having to show an addition to an asset or subtraction from an asset, but you're not showing something on a revenue or expense like normally most journal entries involve one of each. You're increasing an asset, decreasing an asset, increasing or decreasing a liability, and then you're also increasing or decreasing some kind of revenue or expense. Well, here, you're increasing or decreasing something that's an asset on the balance sheet, but you're not at the same time increasing or decreasing um, a revenue or expense. So <coughs> this is um, these types of things dealing with available for sale equity securities are going to be put into that fair value adjustment account for the balance sheet for the asset part. But the revenue expense gain loss part <clears throat> that's unrealized is going into something called other comprehensive income. So comprehensive income includes all of those things that are part of revenues, expenses, gains, and losses that are showing up on the income statement other comprehensive income includes these unrealized holding gains and losses. So be careful when you're looking at the two words as to exactly what is included. So other comprehensive income includes the available for sale securities, unrealized holding gains and losses. These are added if it's a total gain or subtracted if it's a total loss from regular net income to get comprehensive income. So in other words, the net income that includes your normal revenues, gains, expenses, losses, and net income is also going to include the unrealized gains and losses from trading securities. Okay, all of that will be part of net income. Then you're going to also include this other comprehensive income, and together the whole thing is called comprehensive income. So be very careful between whether it says other in front of it or not. Note that other comprehensive income and comprehensive income are two different things. Comprehensive income includes all the things that are on the income statement and the other comprehensive income added or subtracted. 
There's also an accumulated other comprehensive income, which shows the balance of last year's other comprehensive income along with this year's other comprehensive income. And these are all shown on the statement of stockholders' equity for a corporation. So here is a typical statement of stockholders' equity, how it might be set up, okay? And they'll show a beginning balance. They'll show any additions. They'll show any uh, subtractions. And they'll come down to an ending balance. Now, in this particular case here, for this one, there's only additions. They don't happen to have any subtractions. They have positive net income, so that's an addition. And they have a positive unrealized holding gain. So in other words, they didn't have a net loss and they didn't have any unrealized holding losses in this particular year. So they only had additions, okay? So we start out by the beginning balance of common stock. And also, of course, this would also include the PIC account. If there was a common stock account uh, and a PIC account, they would show the beginning balances, um, net income, uh, nor unrealized anything uh, affects the common stock or the PIC account. So unless we issued more new common stock or we retired common stock, those are the only things that are going to affect the common stock or the PIC account. Now, retained earnings is the account that we put the um, close the income summary into. So here at the beginning of the year, we had retained earnings of 50,000. And of course, we're gonna close the net income uh, at the end of the year into income summary and then into retained earnings. So we're gonna add the net income into retained earnings. So our ending balance is the 50,000 plus this year's net income. That's 160000 we now have in retained earnings. Then the next column over is our accumulated other comprehensive income. So as of the beginning of the year, this is from previous years, we had $60,000 in our other comprehensive income type. Okay. Now net income is not part of other comprehensive income. Okay, so it does not get added to that uh, column. But unrealized gains of available for sale securities is added. And so that 30000 is added to the 60000 And our total ending balance of other comprehensive income is 90000 Now, realize that if there were trading gains and losses, they would have been part of net income. And so that would have been part of the 110,000. Only the available for sale unrealized gains and losses are part of this other comprehensive income. Then we have a total column over to the right and we total across all the beginning balances. We total across the net income. We total across the unrealized uh, holding gains that's in other comprehensive income, and we total across the ending balances. Then, of course, we would go down the column to make sure it cross-footed. So 410,000 plus 110,000 plus 30,000 equals 550,000. So it does cross-foot. On the balance sheet, we would show in the stockholders' equity section, we would show the common stock. And, of course, as we learned before, we would also have to show how many shares are authorized, issued, and outstanding. Okay, we would also show the retained earnings, 160000 And we would um, show the accumulated other comprehensive income. Now, what if we didn't show this? Okay. What would happen? Remember that we added apparently 90,000 over the years. We've added to the asset section of the balance sheet. 
if I don't show this as part of the stockholders equity section, I'm not going to balance on my balance sheet. Okay, so the accumulated.